Hello everyone, it's story time. Are you ready for another story today? Yes! Today's story is called Unspeakable Joy by Mikhail Kobel. It's part of the Mary's Muse collection. And Mikhail Kobel, that's me. Hey Muse, look at the cover of today's story. I see a little boy. I wonder who he is. And I see you, Muse. And he's playing with a football. This is also called a soccer ball in the United States. Hmm, I wonder what will happen in today's story. I see the bird flying through a neighborhood and children riding bikes. And oh, there's a little boy. He has the flag of Ethiopia by him. Let's see what happens. Mary was screaming at the top of her lungs. She was drenched in sweat. Her stomach felt like it was doing somersaults and it seemed her heart would burst out of her chest on the next beat. A scruffy neighborhood dog ran wildly, barking behind him. <laughs> the dog was so close, Mary could feel its hot breath on her leg. Mary pedaled with all her might. The faster she pedaled, the more the dog seemed to want to catch her. As she neared the end of the block, the dog's leaps changed into slow trots until the mutt lagged far behind. Mary glanced over her shoulder and noticed the pooch way down the street. She let out a manacle laugh. <laughs> so long, sucker! You can't catch me! Better luck next time! Mary parked her bike at the neighborhood playground and gulped mm, a cool drink of water from the fountain. Mary! Mary! Are you okay? I heard your screaming and flew as fast as I could. Mary finished her drink and wiped her mouth with the back of her hand. And with a smug smile, she said, Oh, that was nothing, Muse. Just me having a little fun. Fun? Inquired Muse. You sounded like you were terrified. Oh, no. You've got it all wrong, Muse. I was having a great time. I ride down this block whenever I'm bored, and then I give a little whistle. That crazy little dog comes running out of the trees and chases me all the time. No matter how hard he tries, he can never catch me. You do what? Asked Muse in disbelief. Mary, have you lost your mind? Why would you do such a thing? I'm just having a little fun, Muse, explained Mary. Mary, that's dangerous. Never do that again, explained Muse. Mary dropped her head as tears welled in her eyes. Yes, Muse, she said ashamedly. Now, now, there's no reason to be upset. This is just a chance for us to learn. Let's go sit down and talk. Mary, sometimes we do things that fill us with joy and seem harmless at the time, but they hurt others or us. It's never okay to do things that cause harm, no matter how much fun it brings us. You were teasing that poor dog. He may not have words, but him barking and chasing you was his way of saying he did not like it. Do you understand? Mary nodded. I'd like to share a story with you about a child I met once in Ethiopia who also learned this lesson. Would you like to hear it? Absolutely, said Mary. Very well, replied Muse. This is the story of a boy named Ron. Ron grew up in Addis Ababa with his father, mother, and little brother Tafari. Ron and Tafari were best friends and loved to have fun together. They would laugh while walking to school. They would play ball in the yard. 
Ron would even tote his brother around on his back while he laughed uncontrollably. His brother's smile was brighter than the morning sun. Ron loved when his brother smiled because he always knew he was having fun. Sometimes, knowing how his brother felt was difficult. Tafari was born deaf. There were times when Ron forgot how to say things using Ethiopian Sign Language. And Tafari was still learning how to use his voice to communicate too. But there was no mistaking what a smile meant. Ron also liked to have fun with his friends. One day, he told them he would make matching shirts to show they were like his brothers. Ron was very creative, so every day he thought about a special design for the shirts, but he could not settle on an idea. One day, Ron had his friends over to play ball while his brother jumped rope. Ron bounced the ball off his head and it flew in the direction of his brother. Watch out! yelled all the boys, but it was too late. The ball hit little Tafari. Ron signed to his brother to ask if he was okay. Tafari laughed and signed back that he was fine and said, it's okay, Ron. Upon hearing his brother's voice, the other two boys howled with laughter. Geez, Ron, you must have snacked the sense out of him. He sounds like a robot, said one boy. Another pointed at his brother and said, he looks like a robot too. Look at that funny thing by his ear. The boys began walking and talking like robots while imitating Tafari's voice. Tafari dropped his head and quietly went inside the house. Ron felt a pit in his stomach when he saw his brother's expression. Man, what's up with that brother of yours? Asked one boy. Give me a second, guys. Let me go check on him, replied Ron. When Ron entered the house, his father was waiting for him. Ron, what just happened? I saw everyone laughing. But Tafari came in very sad. We were all just having a little bit of fun, Dad. The guys made a few jokes, and then Tafari got sad and came in. Oh, his father said with a raised brow. What kind of jokes did they make? Ron put his head down and had to say no more. His father already knew. Ron, your brother may not communicate in the same way as you and your friends, but he has feelings too. Sometimes in life, it's up to those who have a strong voice to speak up for those who may not be heard. Do you understand? Ron nodded. Good. Now I'm sure you'll think of a way to use your voice to fix this, right? Yes, Abba. Ron sat in the room and contemplated what he should do. And then he had an idea. Ron went back outside and explained to his friends that his brother was a child of determination who was still learning how to speak and navigate the world while deaf. His friends were shocked and apologized for their actions. Ron told them that he was sorry too because he never should have laughed along with them but have been a voice for someone who was not being heard. He continued and told them that he had an idea to fix things. He said if they were going to be like brothers, then they would also act like brothers. Ron sent his friends to bring some items he would use for a special surprise when he noticed a stunning blue bird in the tree. Wow! Who are you and what are you doing there? Ron stared at the bird in awe. My name is Neus. I was just passing your home on the way back to my home and decided to rest in your tree. I saw what happened and I heard how you handled it. You are a strong leader. Thank you. I didn't feel strong when those boys were laughing at my brother. I felt ashamed. It's okay to feel ashamed. 
It tells us when we've done something wrong, and it gives us a chance to be strong and make a new choice. You are strong because you chose to speak up from smiling. I heard your plan, and I think it's wonderful. I would like to contribute and give you these items to help. Muse gave Ron two of his bright blue feathers and said, may they be a source of inspiration. Ron worked relentlessly on his special project and he sang a tune while he worked. Like children who fight over toys, my voice rises in your defense. Never again will I be silent and destroy your confidence. Smile brighter than the morning sun. Please forgive me for all I've done. Making you smile is what is fun. You bring unspeakable joy. Ron gathered his friends and helped them apologize in sign language. They also gave him a shirt to match theirs, symbolizing that he was their brother too. Finally, the boys invited Tafari outside where they revealed one more surprise. His brother did not say a word, but the giant smile assured Ron that his brother's joy had returned. And Ron felt a great happiness too. The experience taught Ron and his brother the important lesson. When we bring joy to others, we receive an unspeakable joy too. What a nice story, said Mary, as she envisioned Tafari's smile when he saw the big surprise. I'm going to go home now so I can write in my journal about what I learned today. I think that's a great idea, said Moose. As Mary prepared to leave the park, she found a boy walking his dog. She asked the boy if she could pet him, and she petted the dog. It wagged its tail and rolled over for Mary to rub its feathers. As it did, Mary smiled and said, My giving you joy has brought me great joy. Now this is the kind of fun I should be having. Mary rushed home to write about what she learned in her journal. Lesson three, actions that hurt others should not be fun to me. Joy is helping others smile. And that's the end. We hope you enjoyed today's story. Be sure to check it out on Amazon. You can find it in Kindle and printed formats. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.